Jo here, founder of Freckles, and I'm back with another video. And in this one, we're going to be talking about and um, thinking all about our paperwork. So now that we've offered our wonderful nanny a job, our perfect nanny, and we went with our gut on that decision and we feel really good about it, it's now really important we get all the paperwork tied up, we do the checks, and everything is all done sort of above board and we feel reassured in what we have done. Now, um, if you're doing it yourself, so if you've gone DIY, then it's worth um, making sure you go through all these motions. You can feel a bit like, I've just got to the end, Joe. I've just offered, you know, I've offered the job and they've accepted and really I don't have much more time. But I promise it's so important these get sorted because heaven forbid you need anything down the line, anything happened, you want to make sure you did your checks and you, um, you know, you have that kind of, that framework in place in the background. Um, so that is really essential. If you're gone with an agency, then they should be doing all of this for you. But again, it's good to know what to ask for to make sure that they are delivering on that. Okay. So first things that I would always, we always ask for are some copies of ID. I would go for both co a copy of a driving license and a passport. Driving license, I go for two because I think it's good to have, have them both on file and to have been able to cross check. Um, and the other reason is if you have a driver um, or someone that will be driving your children around, you want to make sure you've seen their license um, and that you've got, got a copy of that as well. The next thing that you all want to think about, I would suggest, is your DBS. So have they got an advanced DBS? Now, DBSs are issued in the name of the nanny. So say your nanny is called Sophie Smith, so it will be Sophie Smith's um, DBS, and it will probably have a company name associated with it. And that co company name could be somebody like us, so Freckles Childcare, or it could be another a nursery she's worked for, in the past, an organisation she supported, somebody she's volunteered for. Um, the fact is that regardless of the name of the organisation, it is her DBS and it is transferable. So that's the major difference between DBS and CLB. So you don't need to get her another one, um, but it is good to see. So ask for a copy of that. There are a couple of things you want to look out for. One is to check that it's enhanced and that it clears up for working with children. So you want to see none recorded next to the children bit. Um, and the other thing is you want to look at is the date. So the date of issue. Um, they don't have expiry dates formally, but I would, we tend to say around the three year mark is where we would ask somebody to get another one. If they, do, if they don't have one already and they do need to get one, they take about three to four weeks, generally, depending on the issuer, um, and they can either use an online place. So the DBSs are charged out, I think it's £46, pounds, um, like through normally, but you then have to pay for a company to process that for you. So we charge £60, pounds, um, and you get varying ones online. Um, some will only do it, some do it as third party providers, and some agencies will only do it if you're part of that agency. Um, so it's worth checking out, but I recommend it. The next thing that I would do is when you get your DVS back is get it enrolled on the update service. You have 19 days for them to do this, and that means they pay £13 a year and they get an up-to-date DVS every year. And you can log on and you can check it out. Um, and it's a really good thing to do, and it qualifies if you need to get them Ofsted registered, which we're going to cover in another module. Um, but it's definitely worth doing, and we recommend everybody. That's the process we are going down. So we are saying you have to get an enhanced DVS check, and it has to be on the update server. Next thing I think about is your paediatric first aid. Um, so have they got one? Have they done one? Is it in date? Paediatric first aid certificates generally last for three years, so you want to make sure that they've got one. Um, I'd suggest they definitely do one. I would definitely make sure it's a paediatric first aid over an emergency at work or a general first aid certificate. Paediatric covers um, lots of different things around um, children and you really focus on the different sizes of children. You can have all different babies, you know, toddlers and preschoolers um, and all sort of more your teenagers. So it's really worth making sure that they've got that. Courses vary. There are six hour and 12 hour courses. Um, six hour courses, we charge 60 pounds for our day course um, and 12 hours tend to be, I'd suggest you would do a six hour e-learning component and a six hour practical. That would be my advice. Um, so we charge £100 for our, um, for our, our 12 hour. Um, with a 12 hour, it is so 12 hours are compulsory for, uh, for nursery workers and childminders for their Ofsted registration. For a nanny's Ofsted reg registration, you only need a 6 hour. Again, we'll cover that in more detail in the following, um, in the next one, next video. Um, so yeah, for now, that's what I was just. Finally, you need to be thinking two really important things left in your references. 
so check the references. Um, I don't, we don't have a particular structure that we ask when we go for references because I want to open it up to a conversation and I want to get somebody's opinion. Um, so I would recommend you give them a ring. Um, you look for three references as a minimum, I would, I would say, um, and try and get someone that's relevant so they've got lots of experience with their previous two, two or three employers. Um, if they've only worked for two families, speak to them and get a character reference. Um, you need to look at the kind of time frame you're going back in. Is it really up to date? Can you get anything else that's a bit more relevant? I really do like a character reference. Um, typically, certain places are much harder to get references from, so nurseries are quite challenging, as are care homes um, and things, and often they will only give you information which is the date that someone started and stopped and any sickness that they've had during that time. So I would really urge you to, um, to check those out, but check those references. So verbal would be my first point of call, and then I would follow it up with an email as well, um, so that you can, you know, if you can't get through to them on the phone, you send an email and you're like, hi, it's what I'd like, blah, 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 and it just puts it on people's radars, and um, you might have better luck getting it back that way, but I, again, don't try not to keep it too structured, so just let it flow. Um, and give a little bit of an inkling into what you're like, what your family's like, so what the role is that they're going to be doing. If your agency's doing this for you, make sure they do it for you. Um, so just be like, have some references, please. Um, legally can't check references, the current reference, until the job's been offered out. So they might have gathered pre-references, um, this worth checking, all right? And if your agency does do it and you want to follow up with anything, if there's something in there, then you can also have those details of the referee and give them a call, and um, that's what we offer out as well. Um, and the last thing is the contract. Now the contract is absolutely key. Do not underestimate the importance of your contract, even if you're only having somebody with you for four hours a week. It is vital. Um, and the reason I say that, and I put so much emphasis on that, is because if, heaven forbid, anything does happen and you need, it just doesn't go very well and something something crops up, have your contract because then everyone knows where they stand. And if you don't have that, it's a lot harder, it can be a lot harder to resolve. So what we have done is we uh, put together our, we've got our contract template for you and you can access that and download that for free um, by just doing the normal thing and we're going to, there'll be a principle to go alongside it, but you will get it all and you can then edit that contract and you can personalise it to you. All the spaces are highlighted in yellow um, of all the information that you put in to personalise it to you. You can obviously remove clauses, there are certain things you need to have included. Um, so definitely have it, it just makes everybody so much, it protects you and it protects the nanny um, and really you must, must do it. Two other things to think about are insurance. So you have this thing called employer's liability insurance, definitely recommend you do that. Um, it's worth speaking to your home insurance provider about whether they cover you um, and whether employer's liability is covered to any degree in your home insurance package. Quite often it is. If not, you can get it with sort of nanny shirt, um, Nanny Insure and sort of more Sam and Michael for about £100 a year. Um, it is a legal requirement as a formal employer, so it's worth checking out. Make sure that your nanny has public liability insurance. This ensures them if anything were to happen um, to the children while in her care. Um, that's really important. Again, she can get that and it starts about 65 from what I kind of think it is um, if they're going for off-step registration. And it's not a legal requirement, but I do recommend it. They need to have business car insurance as well if they're driving on their car um, and obviously you just put them on your own insurance if they are driving your car. Um, so they're the key things about the paperwork. So make sure you get your ID checked, that's driving license and passport. Then you want to think about your enhanced DBS check, get a copy of it or make sure one is sent off. Um, and then you want to think about how they've done the first aid, paediatric first aid course. If not, they need to get enrolled and sort that out. Um, and then you're going to check their three references, make sure you feel comfortable in that. If your agency's doing it for you, again, you want to speak to somebody, just do, ask them for those details. And finally, you've got your contract. If your agency is doing it for you, then they will send you what they should send you a personalised one, as we do, and we put it all together and we get it signed up so we make sure everybody's um, sorted. And that's it. So that is kind of it. That's how you wrap it all up. Get those things, bam, 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 done. I promise you it's worth it at this stage to just do it so you're secure and you're safe in the future. Um, so, and the next episode is going to be about Ofsted. Oh, the joys of childcare vouchers um, and how it's quite complicated, but we can help you through. 
So I hope that's helpful. As always, any questions then let me know, um, comment or just pick us an email. And we will be in touch soon.